we welcome you all to the session uh, eyes on the price how we use kpi trees to maintain focus on business outcomes uh, this session will be delivered by two shrees uh, shrikant balakrishnan and uh, shriram narayanan shrikant balakrishnan uh, is the technology director at uh, travelopia he is currently responsible for innovation and product management uh, at travelopia he runs a global innovation team there uh, which spans uh, across multiple geographies and time zones like india us and europe uh, shri loves product development change management and reengineering welcome shri uh, we have shriram uh, shriram was formerly vp uh, transformation advisory at thoughtworks currently as a product uh, management consultant and prior to that uh, he has held product tech and innovation leadership positions uh, he helps tech and non tech organizations worldwide to improve their performance through changes in their operating model organization design and ways of working and uh, you know it, it, he also helps to deal better with some of the challenges in the digital age especially with covid and remote Uh, working without further delay i'll uh, hand it over to both the shri shri please take it over thank you hello everyone thanks uh, thanks for your interest in this topic uh, let me quickly share my screen as software delivery teams we are uh, under a lot of you know there's a lot of work we do a lot of uh, some of our work sees the light of production some of it um, doesn't unfortunately go all the way to production but this talk goes beyond that it doesn't stop at production it says okay so what if it went into production what after that right how how did it really help the business because if you think about it like why do why do companies uh, invest in technology in the first place uh, they are looking for some kind of uh, some kind of benefit right oh yeah i skipped ahead of myself i should have said that this there are three sections in this talk i'll be uh, taking the first and the last section and the, the the part about how it's being used at travelopia i'll request uh, shri to talk about that in the middle so as i was saying why why do companies uh, invest in uh, invest in technology because ultimately they want some kind of uh, business benefit out of it right they want to either grow their revenue or uh, or protect that re- protect their revenue reduce churn uh, or save some cost or um, they want to reduce risk you know be in compliance with regulations you know, they want some business benefit um and so they invest in technology right but there is a there is a path from the investment to the business impact there is a path and that path is generally understood as uh, uh, the inputs to impact sequence so there is there are inputs what you want to do then there are a bunch of activities then there is the output of those activities that output results in some immediate outcomes uh but those immediate outcomes are uh, really meant to create some ultimate business impact right so this is known as the inputs to activities uh, sorry inputs to impact sequence and it is quite it's a co- well understood sequence even in the social development sector uh um, they, they they understand this sequence and they use this sequence in i have drilled into that a little bit i have expanded it out a little bit on this slide to say that there are two kinds of inputs there are uh, decision inputs in order to make the investment decision and there are execution inputs uh, to begin execution and for the ongoing execution there are execution inputs right so what does this mean in our world in our world of uh, you know when we are when we are uh, supporting the business through the development of uh, digital capabilities Uh, or if you are building software products right what does what does this map to so uh, a decision to invest in a feature or a capability or a digital initiative is usually backed by some kind of business case right it might be a formal business case or it might be a informal pitch whatever it is so there is a business case based on which there is a go no go decision like okay should we invest in this or not once the decision is made to invest that's when you know you start planning for execution and as part of the planning you might do some specking out of what you want to build you might describe it in the form of requirements or you might describe it as hypotheses and so on execution goes on we you know there is a round of development 
and then software goes live in production. Ideally, this whole process is iterative, right? It's not linear as it is shown over here. Um, but, but we know that that is not always the case, right? Especially in large organizations, although in theory, they recognize it needs to be iterative. In practice, it is often linear. So software goes into production and then as an outcome, there might be a, some kind of improvement in some low level metric what we call as uh, product analytics or service analytics. Uh, you know, typically it's a product or a service analytic. There is some movement in that low level metric, but what, what we really need, or, you know, the reason why people decided to invest in that initiative or capability or feature, whatever it is, is because they were looking at this side of the picture. They were hoping for some business impact out of that investment, right? So movement in a metric that matters not just in a low level metric. So to, to take an industry neutral example, you know, let's say, uh, let's say you're, you're running some kind of business where you're operating a call center. And during the pandemic, for example, uh, people could not uh, work out of the call center. Uh, and at that time, there was a lot of talk about, hey, we need to switch to chatbots, right? And even otherwise, people want to minimize the call volume at the call center because as the business grows, they don't want to keep hiring more, more and more people at the, at the contact center or call center. And so somebody creates a business case saying, Hey, if we do chatbots, if we invest in chatbots or they are called virtual assistants in some places, so if we invest in them, we'll save call volume and we'll improve customer experience, right? Because you don't have to, customers don't have to, um, wait, wait, waiting for an agent and, you know, keeping hearing some music and so on. Uh, so that's the that's the rationale for making the investment, right? And ultimately, whether you whether you buy a chatbot, whether you build it, right? Uh, you might have to even if you buy it, you might have to configure it for your use case and so on. Uh, but you have software in in production which is live in production, and usually many teams just stop at this point. They say, "Yay, we put it into production, success, you know, success, we have a successful." agile delivery and they stop at that point and they move on to the next project or initiative. Uh, some teams, they actually go forward and say, okay, we've put it into production, but you know, what is the usage like, like, uh, is the chatbot being used? Right. And they might, they might actually say, oh, okay. During peak hours, when it most matters, our we are, we are seeing thousands of sessions for our chatbot. That means, yes, there is a great, great adoption for our chatbot. And you might, you might, we might celebrate that. Right. Uh, but the point is like, does, uh, does this, uh, is this the real, is this the final outcome? Is this the thing that you're caring about? Right. Uh, from a business point of view, even this falls short, right? Okay. So what you had a lot of chatbot sessions, but how do I know that people are maybe interacting with the chatbot and maybe they are not getting the full answer for what they wanted. And maybe they are still ending up calling the call center. If that is happening, then, then really the objective is not met. Right. So really what you want to demonstrate is that not only there is a lot of chatbot sessions, but actually it's helping to reduce the call volume in the call center and it is improving CX. So that is what we mean by business impact in this context, right? And demonstrating improvement in a metric that really matters. And this is very often, this is missing, especially in large organizations. You know, this itself is not so common. This is, this is really rare. In, in big organizations. And there are reasons for that. The re one of the main reasons is this path from outcome to business impact is not simple. There might be many factors contributing to this business impact and your, whatever you're doing might only be one of the factors, right? So even if you attempted to draw that correlation that because of what we did, call volumes is going down, it's usually not so straightforward to, to draw, to make that connection. And that is where, that is where, you know, something like a KPI tree, which we are going to talk about in this session can help because when there are multiple factors that influence the ultimate impact, you need a, a shared understanding of what those factors are. And, and, you know, I have found in my consulting experience that if you represent those factors in a tree like representation, so this tree is now sideways. I've drawn it sideways here to illustrate the the path from outcome to impact, because at the outcome level, there might be many factors, 
but at impact level you're concerned about one or two metrics that really matter to you right so if you had a tree like representation then it helps to clarify that okay what i did it actually moved the needle on this particular metric over here which then impacted this metric and which then impacted this metric right you'll be able to at least uh, reason about your contributions to the metric that really mattered and so that is that is what we call as a um, kpi tree in this context so give to to illustrate this in the context of the chatbot example we just uh, you know i just talked about uh, what we care about the metric that we care about is call volume right that is why the, the business or the decision makers they decided to invest in this technology but let's this scenario here it captures the situation before the chatbot right it says your what does your call volume depend on call volume depends on a number of factors i've not captured everything here but the more you do self service the more you enable self service call volume is going to go down that is one one factor on the other hand the more your business grows the call volume is going to go up right uh, similarly there are external factors like holidays maybe during holidays the call volume goes down right uh, depends it depends on the geography and the culture but there are external factors also that influence something like this now what we are talking about through our digital capabilities is we are talking about enabling self service so chatbot is not the only thing that helps self service even before chatbot you are the ivr menu the interactive voice response menu in your call center is also a self service channel your website is a is a, another example of a self service channel your mobile app is another example right and what we are doing with chatbot is providing yet another yet another channel right so somebody Uh, says I, i want to do uh, you know fund this initiative makes the pitch that i want to you know we we should uh, spend some money to develop chatbots so that becomes an initiative and in the kpi tree as initiatives are um, as as initiatives are approved you can you can grow the tree like this and say okay i have a new initiative that is meant to move this metric this metric will you know along with other other um, uh, channels will move this metric which will ultimately move this metric right but acknowledging that there are other contributing factors so this is just a quick overview of uh, you know what a kpi tree is we'll see more real world kpi trees when uh, when i hand over to shree shortly uh, but just to just to uh, summarize right so what is a what is a kpi tree a kpi tree the concept itself is not a new concept if you google for kpi trees you will find some material right but the way we are using it Uh, and the way you know i um, when i engaged with uh, travelopia about a year ago i found an opportunity to i saw there is an opportunity to use this particular kind of tree uh, in in some context in travelopia and that is why you know um, i i shared it with shree and and she liked it and and it has been adopted quite a bit right so ours is a specific type of tree where the bottom of the tree consists of product analytics service analytics process analytics and you have the ultimate outcomes at the top right and why are we calling it a kpi tree because every node in that tree represents a metric or a kpi right the tree does not have your uh, it does not represent your uh, road map or what your it does not represent what you are going to do to improve that metric uh, that is an initiative an initiative is something that you fund and execute in order to hopefully move some metric but those initiatives are are represented as an overlay so this yellow boxes are, are are not part of the kpi tree they represent an overlay you know you are saying through these initiatives i'm hoping to move this particular metric in the kpi tree right so with that sort of context setting i'll now hand over to shri for um, taking us through how um, how we are using it at travel okay over to you shri yeah thank you ram uh, stop sharing one second yeah share my screen can someone confirm can you confirm ram can you see my screen full screen yes excellent in anyway, a good morning uh, good to see everyone good participation today thank you shriram for setting the context uh, i th i think uh, before i jump into uh, travelopia and the context i think one thing that we need to understand is uh, like shriram said software delivery is one part of it right but how do we kind of constantly focus on it we move the needle and my challenge whether i work in travelopia or any other company has been how do i do things to ensure that the outcome is moved uh, and outcome could be a 
overall top level funnel movement of a key metrics of the company. Uh, and in Travelopia, I'll give you a brief on why it is relevant for us. So uh, the, the just the introduction of Travelopia itself. So uh, Travelopia is a KKR owned company and we are a portfolio. We have about 10 brands that represents Travelopia. Uh, and the number of projects at any point of time that we run will be 80 to 100 projects at a point in time, right? So the kind of con the context which that leadership team, myself and other directors have to go through when we work with different brands is extremely crazy, right? So reading a lot of text is not, not the easiest thing when we jump across projects. And uh, of course, when Sriram, uh, I, I, I got him as my advisor coach uh, on hey, how do we solve this at scale? And that's when I was discussing with him saying, hey, I'm struggling with consuming so much of parallel information and I can't really synthesize this information. And they started as a simple conversation saying, hey, we should probably try this KPI tree and see if we can represent our uh, various set of bands information in the structure. Yeah. So that's the genesis uh, of KPI tree at Travelopia. Uh, we actually took a real life example of one of the brands that I work in Travelopia. Uh, and kind of say, of course, I can't disclose the brand name, but uh, kind of high level must all the uh, you know PII information, but at least it gives you a sense of how certain initiatives, which is if you look at the the pink color, yellow color, those are the outcomes, outputs that the technology team might be focusing on, which connects back to different project investment, which again connects back to different teams. Yeah, uh, and if you look at the top one, which is the green color, the ultimate outcomes, that's when it kind of impacts the sales team or a customer experience team or a risk team or one of those teams, right? Um, so just to give you probably a, an example here, uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse movement. Can you, Sri Ram? Yes. Okay. So if you look at one of this example, the way it came to me was saying, hey, can you simplify the domain, right? Of course, we can simplify the domain because the brand had about 20, 25 domains running in 20 different websites. And we said, oh, we can simplify the one domain, two domain. But the question constantly was why? And then there was many answers that came, but we logged into saying it's either content discoverability or reducing the admin hours, which the hypothesis, again, this is an important one to remember. Whenever we are doing all this, business leaders tend to say, oh, I'm going to save X amount of time. But those are all generally hypotheses that need validation, right? So this activity leads to this outcome of marketing, reducing the admin hours, which further leads to reduce, increasing the number of leads that enhances the sales, right? That's how we can tie it back to um, a, a bottom node, which is yellow color to the top green color node. Um, let me, yeah, just to, uh, uh, yeah, just, just expanding this a bit more on a very specific uh, use case. Um, so for example, uh, one of the projects that came was, hey, how do we uh, ensure that the sales team is increased, uh, spending more time on newer sales, right? So we did an audit on what they are currently doing and we figured out that they're spending too much time on after sales calls. Then we started looking at, okay, they're spending too much time on after sales calls, what all can we do, right? Um, and that's when we said, if there is a self-serve portal, hopefully it will reduce the after sales call. Now, of course, it, it, it's to be seen whether that initiative will lead to that outcome of reduction of um, after sales call, but at least that's how the hypothesis is built and worked and uh, expanded internally. Yeah. Uh, how do we use it uh, in Travelopia? So we use it, for example, to track the brand outcomes. Like I said, I have 10 brands to deal with. Um, so brand outcomes, we kind of use it. We also have internal shared services. Um, so we also kind of use KPI tree to track what are the outcomes of the shared services, how does it impact different teams, different projects, different clients. Right? So those are two actual use cases that we kind of um, use it. Um, I mentioned a bit earlier about it, but I think the, the, the and, and being a large organization, I mean, we are a 2,500, 3,000 people company globally. So to get um, access to the CXOs for these discussions are monthly ones or by month or once in two months, right? So the number of projects these the, the leadership team generally handles is quite a lot. So cognitive load reduction is definitely one of the biggest uh, challenges we had, and we're trying to reduce that um, using a KPI tree. Yeah, uh, and I, I and it's not just my statement. I also got it validated by some of the other CXOs who are using it, and they said, "Yeah, this makes sense because I can see all my 
initiatives that have been telling people in one one you know one snapshot uh, very uh, i mean this uh, happened in the last couple quarters where uh, you kind of realized like when you introduce a tool of course uh, leaders like me and shriram would have kind of spent a lot of time initially canvassing for this tool but later when we start seeing adoption of the tool it was it was interesting to see there are two interesting use cases that emerged uh, by using kpi tree right so one on the left side uh, the project came saying hey can we do lead automation so this yellow color that i'm pointing here is what came in as like an activity saying hey can we do lead automation right uh, and why do we want to do, do lead automation so this is lead automation is about assigning a lead to a, a particular sales person as soon as the lead comes right uh, and the as working assumption at that point of time was it will improve conversion all right uh so when the project came to the technology team it was just these two oh let's do a new version of lead for lead module so that we increase the conversion and when our product team went on a deep dive uh, they figured out that it's not just conversion there are a lot of sub metrics that uh, we, we can impact right so for example we can improve the percentage live leads we can improve the average first time to attempt we can improve the, the number of attempts which increases the average first time to contact hence improving the conversion but the lead automation module only impacts the percentage live leads right so from from a macro assumption that conversion will increase we were able to kind of identify metrics and say okay that's a metric that we can now start focusing and implementing if we do a new software not all the metrics right so it was also kind of a bit of realization for the business saying oh just software just just the software won't help we can potentially have to try different things to make conversion better right uh, on the right side i think this is another interesting example where if you look at the yellow initiatives which is tx dashboard tx we call it to execution team and uh, the dbd is day by day it's again part of an operations uh, activity uh, and if you look at the top this both was requested by one team which is a to execution team yeah now the trip execution team only has so much time to participate in in a development uh, activity right i mean when i mean by participate they need to participate in planning daily stand ups rolling out testing and what not and then when we realized it hey we are the, the team is asking for two initiatives which is tx dashboard and day by day for guests but the tx team doesn't have the capacity for supporting both they only have capacity for uh supporting one and remember we are a running travel business which is very different to a saas business right i mean we are a running ship uh, and we are doing technology transformation so when you when you when you run a business like that it's very different from an amazon or a technology first company uh, so we had to prioritize so this was another example where really could say oh we are asking for two many things can we stop one and kind of focus on one get the max maximum impact out of it before we start the next yeah so metrics identification and prioritization are two other additional examples we could uh, find with kpi the other one is uh, i'm i'm sure all of us are familiar with business cases especially if you work in a leadership level at a large company business cases are quite common uh, and one of the challenges like i said text is always tough to consume you have to read 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 um, but in a kpi tree it's easy to visualize and then you can start focusing on okay which initiative are we really focusing on is it the is it the initiative x initiative y initiative z or which metrics are we focusing on right so it becomes a much more pointed direct conversation rather than too much verbose conversation in a general business case talk um yeah uh, again we talked about this summarizing which is uh, initiative comes saying that both are important but then we kind of find out uh, what metrics and we import in fact and kind of prioritize x versus y um yeah it, this this is very interesting so i think uh, uh, sometimes we don't realize we can have bottlenecks while we do initiatives right uh because it's the same team that is going through a change or the same team may not have enough people to support it um so when we kind of take initiative x and initiative y initiative x might be de- done by squad one and initiative y might be done by squad two but it impacts the sales team we kind of realize that they may not be able to consume all of it at one shot right so definitely being able to visualize that uh bottlenecks yeah um 
The other areas, what we have started seeing us, I mean, we are trying to see it used across the board for sure. Um, asking very tough questions like, why do you want to get this done? Are you really sure this is improving the metrics or not? If yes, by how much? Otherwise, stop the development. It's otherwise wastage of investment, right? Uh, definitely avoid duplicate parallel initiative. And I've seen this where technology is trying to do something, the CRM team is trying to do something else, marketing team is doing something else, but the moment you put it all together, we kind of realize that all of us are chasing the same goals. Can we all join hands together and work together rather than parallel initiatives? Yeah. The the third point was very interesting. I was sharing this with Sriram that uh, I mean, of course, software engineers like to move around because they like newer, newer experiences. And uh, so what we realize is when new team members want to come on board, whether it is a product owner, QA, developers. Sometimes earlier it used to take ages to explain the context, why we're doing, what we're doing, and, and to excite the developer on, on a business. And this is super simple, right? Five minutes, you explain the context, everyone is onboarded, the bigger picture is clear, right? Um, and that, of course, helps in shared understanding and alignment. And, and, and the most, most, most important, which I'm eternally thankful to Sriram's uh, advice in the last one year is, it just really helps to make business more accountable. Right. Uh, so in the past, one of the constant challenges has been the okay, the technology is delivering this and the magic happens. And we all know magic doesn't happen, right? Technology transformation is tough and it has to be owned by the leader. But there's always this misassumption that you write a piece of code and technology will just transform my business, which is never the case, right? So so with KPI tree, what we started doing is going back on slides. Uh, so, for example, in this slide, we can always say, hey, we can, of course, develop the TX dashboard. I'm talking the right side TX dashboard example. But then coordinating with the guest, trip execution productivity, you know, trip execution team productivity is all the ownership of business, not the ownership of technology. Of course, technology can help, but it's not technology alone cannot impact that, right? So making them accountable. In this activity, I'm responsible for this, but you need to take ownership of the other side. It becomes like a left hand, right hand uh, conversation. Uh, and that, that, I, that I find it extremely pleasurable and joyful uh, to kind of make them accountable. Otherwise, the assumption was technology will own everything and deliver magic, right? Um, yeah, um, how do we maintain it? Um, Shira, we want to add some thoughts here. Um, sure. I mean, there is, I think, one more slide uh, where I, I won't take over control, but I'll just quickly. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I, 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 Travelopia was already using uh, Miro for a bunch of things. And so uh, we felt it uh, a good fit to use uh, use it for this tree as well. Although, you know, you can you could even start off with, uh, you know, like if you're using Office 365, then you know, maybe you could even start off with PowerPoint. Or if you're using something like Lucid charts or things like that, you know, any any kind of collaborative diagramming tool that you have, you could use it. It needs to be owned by either a business owner or a business tech partner or a what is called as a business relationship manager in some cases, uh, or it could be owned by the uh, a product owner, depending on your situation. If there are trees, for, if you are doing trees for shared services, then the managers of those shared services could own those trees. Uh, the the then the extend extending its use is that if you're also tracking say initiatives in Jira right you don't you don't only have say Jira or Azure DevOps or whatever you're using um, so not only you have say epics and features but you also have say initiatives mapped in Jira then you can put a link backwards and forwards from the KPI tree to Jira and back so that uh, even even you know everybody who people who live mostly in Jira can also have a, tra a traceability back to the KPI tree and vice versa. People who look at the KPI tree can go into uh, Jira as well, right? And so there are some details of how to do that, but you know, you can, um, yeah. I don't want to go into that. I think that there is one last slide, Sri, that, uh, that, uh, which is the next one, which is also yours. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think, I think we, we talked about it earlier, but I think the, uh, the, the, the most important thing is, uh, it just calls out what tech can impact and what it cannot. Uh, so in this case, we had a very interesting example where the business said, or oh, do this initiative and the sales team will save a lot of time. Yeah, 
And when we first heard it, we said, yeah, fantastic, we'll jump in, we'll start building this module, we'll, we'll start solving this. And we all started building the initiative. It, uh, uh, we started doing things. And that's when we started using KPA tree, and it made us realize that uh, we can save time for the business by doing an initiative. But what will business do with the same time is something the business has to kind of figure out, right? It can't be owned by the tech. So I think, again, this was a great example where sometimes we think it's common sense, but it's not so common sense, right? People don't recognize that uh, it's a common knowledge. So the moment we had KPI, we said, yeah, we'll finish this initiative. But then saving time goes back to the pillar head or the business head to see what exactly he can do at the same time, right? So some very interesting detail a healthy conversation uh, KPH facilitated for us which is fantastic uh, yeah I guess uh, it's back to you Ram right from the next slide yes yes thank you Sri Hi. Uh, let me bring this back up oh I'll share my screen with this first yes yes and I will hide my controls and I will get rid of my desktop okay so this is the last section where you know uh, even I think you know it's uh, it's been a few few months uh, or in maybe six months or six months plus at Travelopia. Uh, there is still a lot that uh, we can potentially do with KPI trees, uh, and uh, you know hopefully we will at Travelopia as well. But just to give you a, a short summary of what else is possible, so some of this we've already seen, right? So the the tree itself is this part above. But when you overlay the initiatives, the work, the projects that you uh, approved or projects that are going on, that then it becomes an articulation of your product strategy or your business strategy, right? So for example, here it says, because you're working on these initiatives, these initiatives are going to impact these metrics and these metrics will hopefully impact these higher level metrics, which will then impact these ultimate outcomes. So in a way, it becomes an articulation of your business strategy or product strategy, because what you're saying is that, I, I don't have anything currently going on to improve this metric over here, but I have some things going on which are going to improve these metrics. In other words, like my strategy for this year is to focus on these metrics, right? And how? By, by executing these initiatives. So in, in a way, it becomes an articulation of your... So that is one type of overlay. You can do other type of overlays. For example, if you want to, you already have a plan or a roadmap. But, and you might have like uh, quarterly plans, right? But you could overlay that plan saying, okay, this is what I plan to do in the first quarter, second quarter and third quarter. And you know, what is the benefit that the business can expect through those, uh, through those initiatives is like, you know, they can again follow through the tree and understand that. So it's a, it's you're overlaying your map uh, or, a, or a plan on the KPI tree to make it more useful. That's another type of overlay. Uh, if you're if you're using OKRs, for example, right, then you might already have uh, some kind of visual representation of your OKRs, but you could also map them to to this tree here, right? Because they are different things. The so, okay, you know, KPI trees are are something more basic. They, they, the KPI tree itself does not say what you are going to do, what your goals are, what your targets are. No, the KPI tree is just saying oh, what is the what is the what are the forces in your business. You know what are the what are the lower level metrics? How do they influence the higher level metrics and so on? Right? It's it's telling the long term story of your business. But with the help of overlays, you can make it more interesting. So here here what we have done is we have overlaid these objectives and key result key results onto the tree here. So then people can understand that oh my, this is my key result. But how does it really matter? Because I'm I'm supposed to do this, thereby achieve this key result. But that is then going to hopefully make a difference here and which will hopefully then make a difference at this level, right? Because there is objective is at this level, key, key result is at this level, right? So that is another, another uh, use case. And there are some advanced use cases where we, I have in the past uh, helped clients who had um, challenges with prioritization. There are multiple stakeholders and there are difficult decisions to be made about prioritization. I have helped them use a KPI tree to move away from prioritizing the actual work and instead focus on the outcomes and so use the tree to prioritize outcomes like you know through this quarter's efforts we want to move this metric and this metric in the tree 
and then once you prioritize outcomes then after that prioritizing the work becomes much easier because you are just map you already map the work to the tree saying you know this this initiative is going to impact this metric and so on so i call that as prioritize outcomes not work and uh, you know that is a bit of an advanced use case but it is also possible uh, talking about the relative importance so shri already showed one example with a sales funnel where basically once you once you visualize that uh, you know a particular initiative is going to help in the middle of the funnel and another initiative is going to help in the top of the funnel right so which one do you do first right and if you know that the situation is that you have a bottleneck in the middle of the funnel right if you know that there is a bottleneck in the middle of the funnel and the tree helps visualize that then it becomes no brainer that you have to focus on the bottleneck first there is no point in prioritizing an initiative which is going to generate more leads because that is the top of the funnel and you have a bottleneck in the middle right so that is one use case similarly you can overlay a customer journey uh, on the relevant subsets of the kpi tree to to understand to when you are making decisions about initiatives those kind of overlays can help and finally uh, the the part about you know this um, understanding the contribution of your initiative like you you did something like you developed a chatbot did it really help save call volume how much right that is a that is a whole other topic uh, called business retrospectives um, which is a, which is a method that i have um, i have uh, evolved over a period of time with clients and uh, it that really helps to improve the business impact of investments and in initiatives a quick overview of that i'm just checking how am i guess i have another 5 minutes so i should be fine um is that you know basically uh, think of business retrospective any retrospective if you talk about a scrum retrospective for example right what is uh, what is it really about it's uh, it's about continuous improvement right we do retrospectives in order to continue continuously improve however the typical scrum retrospective is just an execution only retrospective like sprint after sprint or whatever you are doing a retrospect on you know just the just the execution part of the thing right uh whereas for example people uh, who have uh, read the lean startup book who are familiar with build measure learn kind of loop and so on that is a slightly you know outer feedback loop where you are measuring the outcome and here still we are not talking about the ultimate outcome we are talking about this product analytics service analytics but still that is better where you are uh, measuring your product analytics and based on that that is informing the next round of execution which is this is essentially what the build measure learn loop was right uh but really if you want to talk about like did my did i had immediate outcomes that's fine but did it really result in impact right so the difference between a lot of chatbot sessions as the outcome versus actually a savings in call volumes right if you want to bring that loop into place then that's where um, the framework or the method called business retrospectives uh, will help because they help you complete these uh, outer loops because now we begin to say okay we have this chatbot but can we demonstrate that because of the chatbot call volume went down by 2% right similarly in shree's example right uh we we did this self service we have reduced the after sales overhead for the sales guys but can we demonstrate that as a result they were able to attend to more sales calls and sales actually went up as a result that those kind of retrospectives would be this outer loop right but you need a lot of measurement infrastructure in place to to be able to um, uh, put these out, outer loops into place and a lot of organizations they don't have the measurement infrastructure in place uh, and i call that measurement debt similar to technical debt or tech debt right you know that if you have tech debt um, your delivery slows down uh, your cost of change increases there are more bugs and so on right similarly if you have measurement debt then you can't you can't assess the impact of what you are doing and so as part of the business retrospectives method i have a module that actually um, puts a measurement improvement program in place so the ceo or the cfo uh, has to fund a measurement improvement program so that you can get rid of measurement debt and then you can actually activate these loops right but that's a much larger topic uh, what we've seen so far mainly Uh, with kpi trees uh, even in the travelopia case is the first module of business retrospective right. which is alignment module and as as shri um, uh, shared already that is having a lot of benefit 
but you can go all the way there are, there are many more modules and out of the six modules four modules make good use of the kpi tree the other modules don't necessarily require the kpi tree but this is a separate topic if you are interested in it if you are if you are in a, a position where you believe uh, you want to improve the business impact of investments in technology then you know um, do get in touch and i'll be able to happy to share more about this with you yeah so that's uh, that's all uh, uh, we had to share uh, happy to uh, answer any questions or if you have any comments happy to hear them thanks shri